In the name of the wee man. It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Here we go, chapter 14, lesson number one, Disproof by Counterexample. Now, before we start this proofs chapter, something that you have to be familiar with are the different number sets. This is something that we have come across in the past. If you feel you're okay with it, feel free to skip this. But a quick reminder of N, W, Z, Q, and R. What is N? What number set is that? Perfect. That is your natural numbers, and your natural numbers are just your counting numbers starting with one. So one, two, three, four, five, and so on. W stands for whole numbers. Brilliant. That is your whole numbers, which is the exact same as the natural numbers, but it also includes zero. Brilliant. Z is your integers. And what's an integer? Perfect. It's a positive or negative whole number. Good. Q. What is Q? Good. That is a rational number. Why do we use the letter Q? Perfect, because Q is from the word quotient, the result of a division. And a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. So I've got a little example here with different numbers. 5, you can write that as a fraction. 5 over 1, so it's rational. 1.75, you can write that as a fraction. It's 7 over 4, so that is rational. 0.001, you can write that as a fraction as well. It's 1 over 1,000, so that is rational. 0.1111111111 you can write that as a fraction that'll be 1 over 9 so it's also rational but if you have something like the square root of 2 could you write that as a fraction i don't know you cannot so it means it is not rational and r is going to be Good, that is your real numbers, which is really just any number whatsoever that doesn't go into complex or imaginary numbers. So, make sure you are familiar with the different sets. Let's start off then with the proofs chapter and disproof by counterexample. <coughs> so, mathematical proofs depend on a series of logical steps. All the proofs that we come across will start off with an implication or a proposition, and it's necessary to establish whether they are true or false. In Advanced Higher Math, there are five different proofs. The first one we have already come across. Proof by induction. Oh, I love that! I know, it's really good. We also have this one here, just proof by counterexample, which will be over the next few pages. There's also a direct proof, proof by contradiction, and proof by contrapositive. So, this is the first one we are going to look at in Unit 3, Disproof by Counterexample. So, Disproof by Counterexample. Shock horror, not all statements are true. Bum, bum, bum. Sometimes, rather than proving a statement is always true, it's far easier to disprove the statement. Because all you have to do is you've just got to find one example that demonstrates that it is false. For example... Example number one, find a counterexample to disprove that all prime numbers are odd. So, we're asked to disprove that all prime numbers are odd. So, rather than going away and proving that, we want to try and find one example that would disprove it. And if you think about your prime numbers, what is a prime number? Good. It's a number that only divides by one and itself. So, starting with two, that's going to be the first prime number, then three, then five, then seven, then eleven, and so on. But this very first one, two, well, two is not an odd number, it's an even number. So you can say that two is a prime number and it's even. And that means then that that statement is false. Woo! First one done. Example two. For any real numbers A and B, it is conjectured that AB is bigger than zero. Disprove this conjecture by providing a counterexample. First of all, what is this word here, conjecture? What does that actually mean? Well, it's an opinion which you think is true, but you've yet to prove. So you could always say, for any real numbers A and B, it is believed that AB is bigger than zero. Think about this then. So how could we provide a counterexample here? Well, what you could do is, a lot of the time, if it's going to be bigger than zero, well, you know if you multiply a positive by a negative, that's going to give you a negative. So you can say then, you can say let A equal a negative one and B equal one. That way, you've got A and B, they're both going to be real numbers, which is what you're wanting. Because A is negative one and B is one when you multiply them together, AB would be negative one times one, which is obviously negative one. And negative one is less than zero. 
We were told that AB is bigger than zero, that is what was believed, but we've just disproved that with A is negative one and B is one. So we can say then that since AB is less than zero in our example, well, the conjecture is false. Woo! Example three, disproved by providing a counterexample upside down A, A, B, funky E, funky R in brackets, A is less than B, funky we arrow, A squared less than B squared, say what? Exactly. There's lots of different parts here and we're thinking, what on earth does that mean? Well, let me go through it. This upside down A means for all. So for all A and B, this wee funky E means belonging to. So a belonging to. This R, well, that's your number set. That's your real numbers. And these parts, we know, but the arrows, what does the arrow mean? Well, that mean implies that. So if we read this out in English, it would say, for all A, B belonging to the set of real numbers. If A is less than B, it implies that A squared will be less than B squared. So we need to provide a counter example. So it says if A is less than B, and we know we're going to square the numbers. Again, a lot of the time, negatives will be involved. There are loads and loads of answers that we could have for this, but the ones I'm going to say is we'll let A equal negative 4. So A is going to be negative 4, and B is going to be equal to 3. That way, A and B belong to the set of real numbers. So we've got that. A and B belong to the set of real numbers, and A is less than B. Think about squaring them. So if we square A, well, that's going to be squaring negative 4. So negative 4 squared gives us 16. If we square B, well, B squared will be 3 squared, which is 9. And that means then that, well, you can see here that B squared will be less than A squared. Or in other words, A squared is going to be bigger than B squared. But it says it implied that A squared would be less than B squared. But we've got it bigger than. So we have disproved that. And we can therefore say that the statement is false. Woo! Example four. For any real numbers A and B, it is conjectured that A squared over B squared will be less than 1 if A will be less than B. Again, a conjecture is just an opinion which you think is true, but you've yet to prove. So we have to disprove that by providing a counterexample. Again, a lot of the time it's going to be negatives that are involved to disprove this. There is no one correct answer for this. There's lots of numbers that you could have. What you've got to think about, though, is you've got to pick A to be less than B. Square A, square B, and you're looking to have it so that A squared over B squared is going to be bigger than 1. There are lots of answers that you could have. Here, I'm going to choose A to be negative 4, and B going to be equal to 2. A and B will therefore be real numbers, and A is less than B, which is what we're wanting. A is going to be less than B. However, you th if you think about squaring them, well, a squared over b squared will be negative 4 squared over 2 squared. And negative 4 squared is going to give you 16. 2 squared is going to be 4. 16 over 4 gives you 4. But what it's saying here is that it's believed that that is going to be less than 1. Well, we've just put in the numbers negative 4 and 2. And we've got 4. We've got a number bigger than 1. So we can say that obviously 4 is bigger than 1. And because of that, we have disproved that statement. And we can say that since a squared over b squared is going to be bigger than 1, the conjecture is false. Woo! Example 5. For any real numbers a, b, c and d, it is conjectured that if a is bigger than b and c is bigger than d, then a over d is bigger than c, b over c. Disprove this conjecture by providing a counterexample. And once again, a conjecture is just an opinion, which you think is true, but you've yet to prove. So it's believed that if A is bigger than B and C is bigger than D, then A over D is bigger than B over C. So we are wanting A to be bigger than B and C to be bigger than D. Again, it's going to be a negative somewhere that is going to be helping you disapprove this. So the numbers I'm going to choose, there are loads you can have. You do not have to have the exact same numbers. Just check, though, that you are disproving that statement with whatever numbers you choose. So I'm choosing A as 5 and B as 4. So A is going to be bigger than B. We can see that. 5 is bigger than 4. And for C and D, well, C is going to be 3. And D, well, D here would be a negative. 
from my example. So I'm going to choose a D to be negative 10. A, B, C, and D, the 5, the 4, the 3, and the negative 10 would belong to the set of real numbers. If we start working that out, A over D, well, A over D would be 5 over negative 10, which really gives you negative a half. And if you've got B over C, well, B over C would be 4 over 3. You know that because this is a negative, it is going to be less than the 4 over 3. So really what I've got is the A over D is less than B over C. However, if you look back to the question, it's believed that A over D is bigger than B over C. Well, because we've got it less than, we have disproved that statement. And we can say that that conjecture is false. Yeah! Try some of these questions in the Unit 3 booklet with a disproof by counter example. Again, just spend some time thinking about different numbers that you could input that would disprove whatever statement you have. Best of luck. Enjoy. Unit 3 booklet, page 75. Email me if you need the booklet. See ya.